uh, Shadow Demon as well. I'm really, really eyes on uh, Raging Potato this game. His rotations need to be perfect. His disruptions Prepare need to be perfect. You can really mess with the tempo of Bertan if you can disengage. Especially if there's some Magnus as well. Like, one of the biggest problems when you're playing Magnus is if you're trying to, like, jump in with, like, a Harpoon Skewer meme combo, grab someone out. If you have any instant lockdown, then that can really put him off pace. And, uh, well, disruption is here. So you got to be ready for that. All eyes on Raging Potato. And honestly, he, he, he can deliver. He's a, he's a very mechanical yeah. player uh, on a support. Not Just support, to correct myself, by the raving mechanics. Like, they, uh, he will need to have the ET hero on top of the uh, on top of the terrible thing. Yeah, of course, yeah, the spirit is the magic. Astral. I did say that earlier, but I feel like I maybe worded it slightly poorly. But yeah, so for ET to actually punish the Terror Blade, he's going to need to be you know, up there quite close, clubbing away, which is yeah, a little bit more yeah. unlikely. Um, so maybe they're not the most shard... important. Charge should be bought here then by Ponyo, um, either from Tormentor. And if you don't get it from Tormentor, then I'd like to see him purchase it himself because it gives you a really easy entry into the fights. It's pretty cheap, cheaper than Blink Dagger and uh, gives you a lot of other nice stuff as well. A little begins. bit of posturing around the rune here. Hox and Raging coming on in. Hox is going to easily be able to grab that bounty. So that should make it three bounty runes for the dial. Maybe he's got WS on the run here. Trying to get his team the extra bounty rune. He got it. Got it. Two for two. What a clutch up from WS. Pulling it out when they need him. Yeah, it's going to be one of them lanes where I feel like Skem might just... I don't know, does Skem bully Rubik? Does does CM bully Rubik? I think a CM can get bullied if she steps up too far to try and bully a Rubik because there is a Shockwave and a Fade Bolt in play with Blood Grenades. And this is very much a lane that levels to either side will be so critical. Uh, level to advantage to Radiant means you're getting skewered, left-backed, and most likely dying and then level two advantage to geek fam is uh, reflection into metamorphosis with double slows or sorry a slow and a root from scam so i think there should be killing occurring uh in the next minute i will keep my eye on there whilst we look around the map it's fine but i expect top lane to be the most aggressive lanes compared to the likes of bottom as we see it. it's uh, raging potato trying to block up camps ponyo trying to also do it as well both supports just focusing on the kind of the equilibrium of the lane whilst the cores just battle it out for the cs currently going relatively even in that lane yeah no giant lead being gained right now centaur may be struggling a little bit but of course very early days uh razor actually putting up a pretty good fight against max so far in the middle lane just spamming out plasma fields static links you know just just using everything at its disposal to uh to try and Fight back against the Lena. If she hits at level three, it can be such a scary, scary point. Yeah. At least for Razor, it's like you can go for the the, the 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 sorry the wave pushing build right with your plasma. So it's not like the worst matchup. It's not optimal for Razor, but it's it's playable. It's not like other heroes where you see a Lena, it's like okay, I just can never go near this wave. Kind of like what we saw with like the Pangolier, like you can swash it out. But then you're half HP and it feels terrible. So I think yeah, Razor at least yeah. has a little bit more life in this one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Trying off to a good start. And uh, Matt going to have to find other ways to break the game on this hero. That's always yeah. what you want to be doing. Top lane, we didn't see any killing. Uh, as level 2s were hitting, it was underneath the tier 1 tower the entire time because Radiant pushed it in. So there was no chance for uh, Dyer to utilize it. As they just had waves just getting shoved right into their faces. I think Scam doing a pretty good job actually, just not allowing himself to be in a vulnerable position. Any kill to a Mag Rubik lane, suddenly we're talking about like level 2 shockwaves, we're talking about level 2 fade bolts, and it's too much to handle. Oh, Shockam. <laughs> Unlucky. He, got lift he lifted the CM up the high ground, but CM still had vision over his sentry, so he was mm -hmm. able to uh, deal with the camp regardless. Yep. And he was unable Ooh. to get rid of the CM sentry. Very nicely done from Skim. Positioning wise. It's such a slow start to the game. Like three minutes in and we're just we're just hitting creeps everywhere. I'm looking around, I'm like trying to see if anyone's you know, trying to test their limits. And bot lane, as I say that, Ponyo has a 10 stick. 
Yeah, he's been forced to step up here a bit because you have to fight into this, otherwise your Morphling is just going to get absolutely binned. Um, can see he was starting to struggle a bit, but it looked bad from Ponyo because he was just taking so many hits and maybe close to dying at one point there with the Shadow Poison stacking up. But he was actually fine due to the stick, oh, and also no, this this really opened fine. up like Akashi able to get two uncontested waves. It's it's really good. This is what we needed to stabilize that bottom lane. Yeah, Rubik went for top rune to try and secure the water rune. Meanwhile, Magnus got a little bit of pressure on him, but has the has the salve, so perfectly fine. Again. No yeah. real. And he's going to be able to drag his wave past the tower. No. Yeah, drags wave past tower with the uh, shock wave, and now that allows him to get this wave somewhat uncontested. I mean, it's kind of surprising to me that Shokum came back to this lane. Uh, maybe could have looked to pressure mid again a bit, put some. Oh, I think it's a bit here. too hard to do that. That's very optimistic. He doesn't have sentries to deal with the ward. There's no smoke. You'd be trying to dive Alina with a SD available with TP. It's just. Unnecessary moves compared to staying top like we're seeing here. He might actually just die, but yeah, I think the, the, the concept of pressure elsewhere is, is much better. Yeah. I mean, you can, that's the kind of the, the theme of the game so far is like no one really wants to make moves because they can't make moves. Like ganking Alina doesn't feel good. You want to apply pressure to Terra Blade. SD's making stacks in the, in the Dire Triangle, so you could maybe argue that Rubik could be focusing a little bit more on making stacks for himself allow that empower from Magnus down the line to be uh, used up, but neither Razor or Morphling want to farm stacks, and your Magnus doesn't want to, really want to leave lane too early, so it, especially when he's not leveling his um, his empower. Both teams are relatively happy with the state right now, but I do feel at some point that it's going to have to change, and Ponyo, he does TP to the top lane. They are hungry to yeah. get some kills. Holding the extra point, but uh, you know, if he does find a good opportunity for an Echo Stomp, then we might see him put the extra level in there. But again, it's just so pushed in right now, like it doesn't really feel like much opportunity for Radiant to get anything done. And he's been scoured out by this uh, this illusion from the TB as well. So, oh, join in the mid lane. Very, very awkward move. Right, Being chased down here. Skemma just to connect with the Frostbite, but at the same time, so much damage coming out. Now, Ponyo from the sidelines with the Echo Stomp. Rose and back. He's running in. Yeah, this is this is awkward. Mac is there. Laguna Blade available, but Tron snipes it. He manages to catch him with the plasma field. The I'm so surprised Rubik that they allowed the ET as well. to run like that. Like he ran at them at full ready, speed. Yeah. And you had like the haste on CM. You had full combo on Lena. Sure, you'd lose all your mana after it, but the fact that they just decide not to do it inevitably just ends up with. The uh, SD going down. Very surprising. Geek fam just didn't go for that ET. His pathing was not the best in that scenario. Just walked past basically three heroes. Yeah. So I felt like he was going to get bought down at any point there, but uh, didn't happen. I guess they were worried about the retaliation from the Razor. But this now gives Razor first blood, and yeah, six minute first blood is still a first blood, and that's a lot of gold going into the Razor's pocket. Puts him top of net worth for the time being, so. Such a farming the game goes the way of Talon. Mm. Yeah, Lena now farming up the stacks. And compare that, Radiant don't have any stacks, so Geek Fam will be pulling ahead at least in their early efficiencies. I suppose this kind of neutralizes the first blood. Radiant Taylor gonna be able to uh, go and get these this wave which comes under tower here, which is kinda of nice. Uh Wisdom Rune, of course, going one for one, Rubik and uh, they would be able to grab theirs respectively. Top lane. Bit of a kerfuffle happening, but once again, it's, it's just scam. Every time he moves forward to get off his spells, he gets dragged out of position and takes a bit of a hit if Shokam is around. Uh, meanwhile, Cox is actually splitting the lane at bottom. But there's a lot of heroes coming in for him right now. Might be more trouble than he realizes. Ooh. Stampede comes out, though. Nice timing. Doesn't get caught by the Echo Stomp. Even Terrible uh, joined. Geek fam. Yeah, they're arriving to this right now. Astral doesn't quite spot them out, I don't think. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look super fun for them. TP back to top. Go defend the tower. There's a... That stomp connected. That would have been beautiful, though. Like, timing the stomp with the stampede. 
eating through the duration which he can run away. Yeah. And yeah, only a perfect. single kill. It kind of doesn't <laughs> yeah. really favor either team because it's like both teams need the farm right now. I think that Talon break know. from the lanes a little bit better. So them farming right now is very optimal. Geek fam, they're happy because they 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 want to take this game at you know a little bit later. They they uh, they come online after let's say like two items each. Whilst Talon, a single item in every hero is pretty much go time. You see with Razor, he's rushing that BKB. Yeah. You know, like, like think. counterpoint though to that, you are playing with Morphling Magnus. You know these guys aren't like Mag is fine in lane, but he's he's not someone who you're kind of expecting to win the lane with i don't think oh no he does he does like he does win lanes magnus yeah. with rubik shockwave and skewer it's you don't really kill him but he can get kills for sure so you have to respect him Zentor does finally finally our second kill nomad Woohoo! Woo! talon getting more yeah so talented. Know, they, they just came out of lanes like a little bit better off on talon so now a couple of kills it, going their way as well it goes back to the draft where like i look at geek fam and i praise their ability to you know play out some lanes but because of the lena pick there's no you know glue to their draft there's nothing connecting the lanes there's no way to, to pivot on farming and to create new types of uh kind of events for the game to be annoying for talon and it's why you talon are not afraid to to continue hitting creeps Okay. Mag moving into the middle lane, looking on towards the Lina here with the ERP and Chuan wrap around the back lines as well. They're going to be able to take it down. Or are they? Stampede comes through along with Spirit. It's going to allow Mac to get himself away. And more moves to be on the Razor, so also not going to eventually get chased down by the Plasma Field. And nice idea from Talon, but Centaur yeah. showing the strength of the Stampede. If only one of these stumps connected, it really would... Uh, I should know. Wait, they need another stun. Sorry, take that back. If they had one more of a stun, that's the better line. If they had one more stun, then it would make life a lot easier. But alas, they didn't. Yeah, RP comes down, but it's just it's just not enough to hold us still long enough. And you know, this Centaur was a direct response pick to the Razor. We're kind of mm -hmm. seeing why here. Fox yeah. is able to uh, just press R at any point in the map anytime someone is linked and get them to safety. So would you like to see Talon playing at a slightly faster pace yet, or are we... I mean, I guess we want the blink on Mag, right? Hmm. I think you just go straight for blink. That's about it. That's like, that's your timing. Get a blink dagger, bring your morphling, hit some towers with the Vlad's, the aura. Mid lane. Purge in the middle lane. Razor. Not really committing super hard to this. He's getting a ton of damage back into them right now. Laguna comes out. The right clicks are there. And they do get the kill. Scam dies in response, though. But Mac, looking to deal some damage. He's got Dragon Slave out, but doesn't do enough to take away at Ponyo. Now Tower's getting forced a little bit, but Jokam's here with the Fade Bolt, so it'll push them back to the other side of the river. And that's the thing. You go for this Razor kill, and it, it does cost you quite a lot in terms of health resources. <laughs> This Magnus Courier coming to him right now. Like, imagine a world in which that was like 20 seconds quicker. Like, he's about to get the blink dagger. Like yeah. the way that Geek Family groups mid four heroes clumped up. Oh, I could hear it. Nomad screaming, the four man RP. You know, it just nope, wasn't the case. Now they're blink. They're going on to Mac. Skewer to Lena. Yeah, they've got a beautiful skewer. Okay, Mac's not making it out of this one. I can say that for certain. Down it goes, Alina. Illusion Rune denied at the very least. Chuan will not get the bottle refill, but will he get a kill in response? Oh, just Stampede. about flipping Raging Potato. Stampede comes out, though. Man. This Cox is... Uh, uh, this, this guy gives to charity, I'm telling you that. Stampede hey. for a support? Which it's... The uh, charitable offlaner I've ever seen. It's the payment for him just AFK farming bottom. And like, this is what you need to do on Centaur. Like, how many times I see a Centaur get a Veil and suddenly join his team. Like, guys, I got Veil, let's go fight. You know, I can stampede in. Like, no, I think this game, he needs to to replicate, like, the Magnus logic of just sit in your lane, hit your creeps. Once you get Blink Dagger, then you can join a smoke, maybe try and get a little bit going. But he knows in the back of his mind, there is no core for him to follow up with constantly. It's like you want to make that one smoke play, get a kill, retreat back to farm wait a couple minutes go again like they they can't continuously break down the map with these heroes and unlike talon where i feel like they are 10 minutes away from wanting to try and make every single objective feel like it's theirs to take 
I think Manta is on the way for Morphling. He has the Asher right now, just the recipe. Left for him to get. And I guess the Deodim as well, yeah, but pretty. he's basically not the god for that. So just recipe left for Manta. Yeah, well, I don't think I've cast a C uh, game, by the way. That's 15 minutes for five kills. It feels abnormal. I, <laughs> I'll be right. I really am. I'm, I'm lost for words. Yeah, I'm, I've. Yeah, normally cool. this region's got like, oh, he's going in again. What the hell? You know, like already doing that at this point. I'm not used to the having. It's almost over by this point. Mentally or physically? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all towers except for top tier one still standing. So. Mid lane completely not shoving either way particularly hard. Yeah, everyone's just farming. Everyone's just hitting creeps. Everyone's comfortable in, in waiting for another timing. You know, I want to see them go with RP, but at the same time, it would be a bit of a force. And hey, you're so close to your BKB on, on, on Razor. Like, I think that's a big thing as well. No one's really going for like these value items, you know. None of the ones and twos are going for anything which they want to be fighting with just yet, so. It's kind of funny though, I look at these two teams, travels. their average win time like across their series is like mid mid 30 minutes for game wins. The longest game between, not between the two, but the, if you look at the total games, was 46 minutes and it was Geek Fam in the previous series today. The longest game Talon played so far is 42 minutes. It's like, this does not feel like it's going to be a 35 minute game or a 42 minute game. Maybe for Talon actually, I could, I could see 40 minutes being like their window of joy. To, to crush them. Looking at Raging Potato in the mid lane. Yeah, in comes the ward. In comes the skewer back. So, <sighs> nope. Wanted to go for the so much Didn't damage. even get it off. Yes, sir. Now, this ET morph combo, we saw it so many times before, but you remove their, their magic resistance. You throw in some higher, high level adaptive strike. Eventually, with the Kanda, it is overwhelming. And ET will also. I'm sorry, Terrorblade will also have to be very respectful of that. And they are. Gonna be slowly turning up the pace now. This is the window where I expect them to want to be aggressive. As soon as Morph has that manta and start dispelling some frost bites and getting a bit more aggressive, they are taking some stacks and moving towards the bot side of the map. Roshan, a little bit ambitious, I feel, for these guys. They probably need at least one more item across the board before they entertain that idea. But for now, Geek Fam. Yet to make a, a big move, a big statement in the game. We don't expect them to do it, of course, but when will they be happy? The Manta on the Terror Blade, probably not a big enough timing for them to want to play on, so for Geek Fam, at least, it will just be farm, farm, farm. Hit them creeps and hope to come out the other side with something. Manta's going to make a big difference to this game. Of course, Morphling's already bought his recipe. Terror Blade, he's got his very, very shortly as well, so. Will be kind of neutral in that regard then, as both waves are going to be pushed out by the Mantas. Does make it a little bit easier to play from behind though, so now I assume we're going to be uh, happy with that. Get the uh, get the waves pushed out for your team, get a little bit, a bit more farm off the map where you otherwise wouldn't. And it's a power of Manta on a carry. I guess the first big objective we're going to look for outside of the tier 1s is, is probably Roshan. Like, I can't really see the team looking at tier 2s before that point, so... At the moment, it's night time. I, I think Talon had like that ability, though. Really want to push it. I think Talon, like... Like, they, they... As soon as they hit their confident on cores, like, I could see this type of lineup diving towers, doing anything that they want, right? Like, this idea of just go fish, go find, go kill, right? And they're kind of half doing it in mid lane, that like they're poking, they're ready. They caught the centaur with a sleep. They finally got him. Oh, oh Ooh, nearly. But, but it works. Yeah. Well, I feel like talent. Oh, and they're fishing again. Ooh, there it is. One. There it is. Yeah, great skewer so far from uh, WS. Very nicely done. Tower. Like, talent, they keep like giving us like drops of aggression, but at any minute, you know, the the, the gates are going to open. It. It really should just be this like massacre on the map. Like punish the fact that Geek Fam are just just farming like the centaur sure he's got a blink dagger but normally the blink provides a kill or two to accelerate the shivas there's no way for him to accelerate his own farm other than hitting creeps and of course Lena and terrorblade they are destroying the jungle right now so there is so much overlap in farm that it, it is hurting them just a little bit 
of course, net worth relatively even across the cores. The main lead for Talon with that 4K is coming from the supports. Rubik having about a you know 1.3K advantage over the uh, the counterpart for Geek Fam. Yeah, he's, he's, he's doing very good actually. Yeah. Able to pick attack. up a decent amount of farm, I guess, stealing um, wave clearing abilities. The Fade Bolt is going to be really strong. And he's been sitting up the top lane quite a lot, answering the constant shove in from Natsumi on the TP. Now, Natsumi. You know, the game slow with Skem's ulting, by the way. Like, see him just ulting for some small camp and stuff? Like, yep. Uh, Alright, oh, time to go for go Roshan. Into Roshan. Yep. They feel like they do need that Aegis to give them that extra layer of protection if they do go for those those dives. Yeah. As said before. And Geek Fam, eh, not going to answer this. They're just going to try and get waves in. Push down bottom, push down mid. All right, Talon, this is your time. All right, there has been eight kill in 20 minutes. Oh, it's such a spread. It's just the, uh, the World Cup scoreline. 7-1. 7-1. Very oh, nice. That picture of the, the, God, the old man missed holding the trophy. Cast, it'd be very bad. <laughs> yeah, so get lane sorted first. Geek fam, you know, this is something we keep seeing more often is uh, after you take Roshan, enemy team just goes aggressive and tries to find something, but instead it'll be them who's been found. WS with a nice skewer back once again. RP coming down as well. Stampede is there, but he can't go anywhere. <laughs> Standing completely still as Akashi comes in and scoops himself up a kill. 3-0-2 on the Morphling at 20 minutes, exactly where you want to be, just scooping up the occasional freebie. And now, he can start running it down the middle lane with his Aegis in pocket, with the Manta, Phylactu ready to go. Yeah, Akashi, he's, he's ready to punch. EB yeah. just not ready to answer just yet. You really want to be having that Scardi online first before you start kind of going mano y mano with uh, Kashi. That will be the uh, the big turning point for Geek Fan. I think in the back of Talon's mind, they, they do want to try and get a little bit more from the map with this first Aegis. Ideally, clearing out all the tier 2 towers would be you know optimal. They didn't decide to go you know, crazy aggressive beforehand. I feel like there probably were some windows for them to at least, you know, showcase their strength to Geek Fam, but now Geek Fam smoked up. They're hoping to try and take away this uh, Aegis straight away from the Morphling. Yeah, Lena no does RP, have the axe so... with the flame cloak. Vision down from Skem. Bakashi waveforms this wave. He does die. Oh, he uh, doesn't. Looking for the Rubik instead. Just disrupt the Morphling for the time being, and then watch well, Okan. They need to finish the job hit. Finish the green. Oh, Jokan's still going to be able to get away with this. But Akashi, he's not taking enough damage on the front lines. Finally, they will be able to bring him down. No, they won't. He's still alive. Not even Aegis lost yet. Oh, no, mind turns to Alina and does to some random hits. But still worthwhile for the time being. Two supports dead on the side of Geek Fam. Now they're chasing him for more Talon. They're hungry. They're wanting to find Mac here. But Mac with the Ags able to fly over the cliff to safety. Talon won't be finding anything here. But they will have a, now an undefended tower to look at instead. Well, just so close for Geek Fam. Like if that Morphling didn't go for the hard camp, just maybe hit the tier two tower, it would have just been instantly ages taken away. A little bit of life for Geek Fam to play on, but instead they don't find the Morphling, and then you have this super optimistic blink from Raging Potato because Ruby gets off the Glimmer, the bonus magic resistance, uh, the barrier, sorry, to then survive through the Laguna. Then Estee's blinking into right clicking with a dust and. Yeah, it's just not a fight. There is no positioning for Geek Fam to utilize to try and give themselves a some advantage there. And a couple more kills go the way of Talon. Natsumi, he really is just trying to help his team out as much as possible with his presence in the fight. But he he just wants his Scardi. He's getting dragged into a couple of fights that he doesn't really want to be part of. And I think the silver lining, of course, is at least the Aegis did eventually go down. Yep, Akashi taking the uh, Tormentor all by his lonesome. So, both Tormentors taken. Raging Potato gets one shard. That'll be Demonic Cleanse on the board now. Very, very strong. Jokam also gets a saving ability as well with a Telekinesis. So, both teams amping up their save a little bit with those Tormentor takes. We'll make a big deal in these fights, especially when you're looking at those carries, like getting the Morphling 
getting him able to uh, get off the strength gain, the Manta, in those clutch situations. That'd be really good for your girl cam. And same on the other side as well. If you can help the Ruby get off the Sunder with a Dominant Cleanse, then also a very big deal. No BKBs on, on either of these, so saving abilities having a lot of value. All right, I just want to do a quick... Whilst the game's a little bit slow, I want to do a quick poll in Twitch chat. All right. If we got Tormentors removed in the next gameplay patch, next patch, would you be upset? Like the whole concept of Tormentors, if it was like a, a one-time thing, we got them for a little bit, but then they disappeared, would you be upset? Like, yes or no? Thank you very much. I'll look forward to seeing the answer in delay time. In the future. And they found something. Hey, there we go. Harpoon grabbed. Oop. Uh, puts himself on the cliff whilst Skim is not on the cliff, but ah, Jokam fixes it, so don't worry, buddy. Yeah, you cliff doing good job. And now WS feels happy. <laughs> it seems rather unnecessary to go for the cliff play there, now I think about it. <laughs> it's just kind of complicating, complicating things for no real reason, but uh, star points, no, star points is always a reason. As Gunnar said. Hey. When you feel cool, you play better. Yeah, he's just practicing. He wants to make sure he, he has it calibrated for the opportunity in the future. 11 for 1 to Talon. And Harpoon, of course, we've just seen utilized by Magnus. We've got Dungeon Yasha on the Razor looking toward the Lincolns. Just, you know, slow and steady item progression from Talon. And if we look towards Geek Fan, that's the main ones. They're the one dodging every fight. Dodging pretty much... The whole game of Dota right now. <laughs> but Scotty oh, yeah. is complete on Terra Blade. They've had one kill. <laughs> they are not playing the game. Like Shiva's soon complete on uh, Centaur. Scotty's soon complete on Terra Blade. Oh, it, sorry, is complete on Terra Blade. Like, they have incredible tools to take a fight, but they need to smoke up a fight, have that high ground ward, find that initiation, and respect the fact that any minute you could just be multi hero Echo Stomped or multi hero RP'd and it could completely turn the. Uh, the fight for them so geek family they have the tools but it's all on the execution how do they enter it yeah and that's they why have we haven't been available. going for much aggression yeah. you know it's it's just their fight conditions are there's a long list of fight conditions for them you know we need to know where this elder titan is we need to know where the rp is we need to know where so much is and that's information they just don't have right now therefore they will just farm this map until talon hits the high ground <laughs> yeah but hello yeah, we're here there we go. Yeah, the doorbell gets pressed, and uh, time to come home. Or is it? Okay, that's smoked up. This is it, Geek Fam. They're wrapping around, but they're going to be running into so many wards from uh, Talon. There are multiple wards in this area. Oh, it's such an awkward way to start the fight, though, with your Lena like trapped on the other side of the engagement. I, I don't know, man. Wait, 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 they're waiting. They see Muffling. They see Muffling. Akashi. Akashi. It's a great target. Jump in. Stop. He doesn't have the strength morph going. He does get it off just in time. What does Scotty? It's not going to make a difference. Akashi is gone. The patience. It pays off massively. And they get the enemy carry. Talon's still hanging around and clearing out a couple of waves, and then we'll scarper towards the tree lines and try and get themselves away. But they are chasing. That secret reflection Rubik. finds Jokam. Jokam trying to get himself out of there. WS going for the TP out, and he's going to be successful. Laguna Blade puts an end to the Rubik. And that will get him the second kill. Oh, what a, what kill a smart move. Two and three for Geek Fam, and now the game's almost even. That was so cool from Geek Fam. Okay, like so many teams there would run up into that high ground, place an observer on that high ground or a sentry, and in doing so, they'd reveal their position. Like if you have ward sentry and you see a sentry just, you know, appear out of nowhere, of course, okay, there's, there's heroes in this area. So they hold the low ground, they hug a ob sentry, they know that talent aren't hitting the tier three. So at some point, someone will have to sweep back through that part of the jungle to get back to their fortified high ground area. And of all the heroes, it was the more thing. So Geek Fam going for a super disciplined play, you know, respecting vision to its highest level and hugging that low ground. And yeah, a, a great pick off. But again, they, they, they can't really turn it into anything else. There's, you know, there's no Roshan to run too quickly. There's no tower they want to comfortably go and hit. So it's a, it's a kill to continue the game. But I think for Talon, at least, they, they need to respect that just a little bit more. They, they can't just walk around the map by themselves now there is plenty of sorry pick off potential morphling of course if he had bkb probably not going to be dying so maybe akashi's going to be thinking about that one relatively soon 
I was I was ready. I was clicked on him to see if he'd queue it up. The old carry classic. You die, you instantly queue it a BKB. But yeah. it hasn't happened yet. Still sitting on the two gay gold, leaving it a mystery. Roshan I mean, has a respawned. He considers like butterfly or something is just a direct answer to the TB because if the TB can't hit him then it's only Lena who can actually bring him down but just don't be stunned lol another smoke oh, deep fan wait he's got butterfly oh he's a good butterfly sure okay yeah. into SD though ooh it doesn't matter Talon taking Roshan very quickly can Geek Fan get here in time the scan connects so Talon they they're know they're coming far away I don't think this Roshan's going to be fast enough, but they need to get in here now. A little bit of time. They don't have anything to see into the pit other than the Shivas. Shivas going to tell them all they need to see. Akashi is in the pit. It's being picked out right now. Step P comes through. Snatched. They're running into the pit, but it gets the Aegis on the Morphling. But it's almost immediately going to get taken away. Or is it? The, the TB's just doing way too much on the sidelines. They've taken down Akashi. Scam dead in the back lines. RP comes down onto two, but right now you don't have your Morphling ready to do that follow-up damage. And Natsumi's been disrupted on the sidelines. Raging Potato positioned perfectly in this fight. Akashi tries to get away, but straight into the hands of the Lina. Does it matter though? The Morphling is out regardless. Gets the TP away. Now, Chuan held still on the sidelines. Scam and Cox just carefully keeping it at arm's length and allowing Lena to come in and finish the job. Geek fam do find something from this. They take the Aegis out of the hands of Akashi. They bring down the Razor as well. Buybacks from Scam and Ponyo as well. But, oh, what an awkward fight, T. Oh, it's an awkward fight, but now look at the quick fire Morphling. After one awkward fight, now we get the carry BKB. <laughs> there Woo! it is. <laughs> the carry Q. Yeah. It just feels like Talon have potentially missed a little bit of a beat with their with their aggression, right? Like they've they had this Morphling pick off because of an exceptional play from Geek Fam, and then they go for Roshan, but they're only putting the Morphling by himself in there. They're not giving like the Razor hasn't popped ultimate to to hit it, or he's not providing any assistance so rather than it taking maybe 20 seconds it's now taking 40 seconds and geek fam from the bottom side of the map smokes all the way over it was it just feel like talent just aren't on the same page right now like they're they they were yeah. scaling beautifully everything was looking good but they've not respected geek fam being so absent off the map like they weren't off the map because they were getting crushed they were off the map because they wanted to farm so like you should be expecting like the punch back and you know there's a little bit of punch back from magnus as he kills off the shadow demon and I'm just a little bit surprised that Talon have decided to it feels going on a little bit of like an autopilot style of gameplay while Geek Fam is the entire time. Alright, yeah. we're, we're 10 kills now. Doesn't matter. Keep skipping. Wait for this. Wait for this. Okay, now smoke. Like every smoke from Geek Fam has connected beautifully. A Morphling kill, a Roshan is Yeah, just the strategy from Geek Fam right now. It for Twitch chat, it might be a little bit boring, but it is going to at this rate be game winning if they can continue it. Yeah, and to be honest, like, Geekfam got so much more out of that Roche fight. Like, they get the cheese, as you mentioned, they get, and are very handy. They got a the kill. Point out as well. They got the Roshan kill as well, so yeah. Aegis, all it did was kind of stop the Morphling dying, which, I mean, I know that's the point of it, but if you're dying to pick up the Aegis, then, well, it kind of cancels each other out. It's not great. Like, against a Terra Blade, you want to have an Aegis to force a fight well enough that meta is used to then disengage and then fight post meta, right? Like Terrorblade is a hero that has an incredibly long cooldown to be able to pump out his maximum damage. Um, and Aegis allows you to do that quite nicely. And then, yeah, unfortunately for Talon, their indecision, their their lack of committing for the Roshan, I feel like they'll regret only allowing Morphling to do it solo. But they now smoke up. They want to be the aggressors this time. A haste rune available for the Razor, if that doesn't get dispelled, could assist them just a little bit. Gem on Magnus as well, so they can clear out some of these wards that have enabled Geek Fam to find these picks. And again, testament to Geek Fam, they are reading this very nicely. They move to the top side of the map together. They aren't going to be picked off. And Daedalus is complete on Terra Blade. That is a lot of damage if he goes uncontested. Yeah, it really is. They have the damage on Geek Fam, that's the thing. And now they jump in once again, going for the drag back onto the Centaur. And they have more than enough damage to chew through him. Keeper's guard, BKB, doesn't matter. I'll kill him off regardless. Centaur had a millisecond to respond. He just sees out of the fog an obscentry appear on the high ground. He's like, uh... Rut-row. <laughs> <laughs> Rut-row, exactly, yeah. 
Okay, time to go for the pick off. Yeah, this is the beauty of this game. Like, either team just has that pick off potential, but it really is about setting up that fight, making sure you're in position. And of course, Akashi has the BKB, 3,000 gold as well. <laughs> Uh, Lina and Laguna blading the uh, Tormentor and very nearly killing the, uh, the poor Raging Potato before he could get off Disruption, but... Imagine if he just didn't have lives. buyback. Imagine, yeah. That'd be so funny. I guess, uh, actually, I'm trying to remember, like, have there been times where a team has, like, lost two or three heroes and then lost Rax because they're dead to Tormentor? I don't know if yeah, we've, we've seen plays, ones. like, that devastating. Like, normally, we have. the Tormentor death... It was EEU, uh, Birmingham qualifiers, I want to say? Hmm, okay. That absolutely happened. I'll send you the replay afterwards. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, I, I want to... I'm trying to know, but like, at least in... Outside of qualifiers, in like tier 1 Dota, like, we're yet to see like the... Oh my god, they just lost the game at some random 30 minute tormentor, what the... You know, like one of those ones. Yeah, I mean, that's a PA thing, but I don't think that counts. Actually... Yeah. Blowing yourself on the From what? That's some, not yeah, a that's failed the attempt, that's one. just a stray dagger. Oh, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, with the, yeah, true. That's a good. That's a good example. Thank you. Smoke up though from Geek Fam. They're looking. They're stunning. They do connect on Tran here, but do they have the follow-up damage? Raging Potato jumps in with the disruption once again, and uh, well, Tran's gonna be able to get himself back out to safety because of it. Or was it? No. I think they just I'll realized that wasn't really an option. I'm not too sure why they why they disrupted Tran there, but. Yeah, it's very it's a a couple too many spells, but for Talon at least, that's perfect for them, right? Metamorphosis is now on cooldown for 100 seconds. So for Talon, just yeah. sit through this, wait for the meta to end, and then most likely just go hit top top tower, force them back to the base. You already have vision in the area, unless they're going to try and defend Bunham, but and this is the window. This minute and a bit window is when Talon need to do something. They need to find more than just a, a center kill into farm. And somehow it's Geek Fam are the ones who are potentially forcing Talon back to base. I'm... This is kind of cute. They really don't want to have an engagement here, but starting to just tap on the high ground and forcing Talon to not engage is, is very good. How long will it last? Well, oh, quite a while with this army of illusion just charging up here. Like, Tron is kind of struggling to deal with it and even pops the ultimate to try and get, get rid of these guys. Smoke up from Talon, though. They want to clear out the rats, but the rats are always squeaking back into their hole. Want nothing to do. It, it just feels like Talon are just working perfectly. They're just too slow to make the big moots, right? Like they've Geek Fam are just reading them so well, and also like Talon, like Meta's used. Oh, oh, oh! Ooh, it doesn't get the stun. Okay, like for Talon, like you. That <laughs> like what? What were they waiting for? Right? Like the Meta's off cooldown or been used? Sorry, not available. Why did it take like? so long like they could either run to top tower or they could Mac. sprint to bot lane they, they get on top of the leader right now lena almost they brings down there ponyo but there's the skewer coming on in and akashi has the damage just to blow up mac i will say goodbye to the lena but again you know it, it just feels like this is all delaying for natsumi all delaying for the next metamorphosis which is now off cooldown so wait for the lena to respawn and go for it although We'll see how uh, how giddy Natsumi is now he's got his amplified damage. I feel like you don't go for anything without Yelena, but there has to be that temptation, surely. Talent is there will be a temptation to walk up to the high ground to, to maybe try and do something here. Magnus, he's looking to hunt. Razor baiting just a little bit in mid lane. If anyone wants to jump, then Mag would be able to reinitiate him. Oh, she now steps up to the high ground. Taking the tower. The first tier three of the game is to fall. Jump in, stun, and there's the double damage. Natsumi just blasting away at the Morphling, forcing them back for now. Cox taking so much damage in this engagement, though. And he is going to be the first to fall, but WS might be going down soon afterwards. A terror blade just doing way too much. Talon, after respect, to trying to get himself back. Oh, Raging Potato tries to go in with the disruption, but ends up shadow poisoning instead. Can't get the catch. Blink away too quick. They're not chasing any more than this. They're still waiting for their Lena. Both off laners now lying dead. Giving away a gem. So I think Geek Fam are going to be pretty happy with that, right? Like, sure, you, you lost a Lena earlier, you lose your Centaur, but 
for Magnus to to trade away his life for a kill and then give away a gem, when Terrorblade is already, already a very you know, map intensive hero, eating up the map with the with his illusions, wave clearing as much as possible. You throw a gem into the mix of three, and now there's two. I mean they already had one, but to remove Talon's gem, to have your own gem in play, to have a reserve one available, you can only expect Geek Fam to have vision advantage. And they are just under so much like indirect pressure, right? The waves are getting skipped in. Their talent are having to think about we want to go siege, but we want to go to defend. Now they're going to Roshan. It is up, but this time if talent are to do it, they need to use more like does Geek Fam even does even keep them? No, I don't think Geek Fam even knows. They're just hitting mid, they're hitting bot. At some point someone's gonna ping it on Geek Fam and go, uh oh, it's too late, sorry guys. Yeah. Do you think they just didn't realize? Yeah, a, a little bit. I think they maybe were hoping for like a longer respawn or something, but they... it was an Aghanim's Roshan as well. It's a pretty important one to at least contest. Good economy to, to reclaim. Who took the Ags though? Morphling's currently Morphling holding it. has it right now. Maybe he gives it's it to a, Magnus? It's a very, nice. very yeah. weird one on Morph, which you probably don't want, so yeah, Magnus will take it. Ontos now available. Another catch. Okay, yeah, alright. I mean, it's very good for Magnus, right? Like, Ontos, you stun them up, you drag them through. Rubix not demonic, but okay, sure. He's had that for some decent time, to be fair. A couple fights back. Yeah. Good ability, but... All the Shadow Demon's abilities are pretty decent to steal on Shadow Poison, maybe. Now it's going to be Geek Fam kind of just. I mean, I, I say playing defensively, <laughs> Look at Scam. but I'll be honest. Yeah, Scam's just farming uh, up jungle creeps. Just, it's, it's no different how uh, they've been playing this game anyway. Like, yeah. they've just been running around the map, shoving out waves, evading Talon where possible. Like, they respect the go for sure. I think Talon maybe showed a little bit too much respect in this game, I feel. I think. As soon as they get out of this one, win or loss, I think the coach review will be talking about trying to play on some timing a little bit more, create a little bit more pace, try and you know set a little bit more narrative in the game because the way that they've played has really just enabled Geek Fam to do whatever they want. It just all farm, no fight. And... Yeah, but at the same time, like the, kind of the curse of having these supports, which just don't do a good job of shoving waves. Like I guess, I guess CM with the. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I guess like Rubik, when he steals a decent spell, the Fae Bolt plus one can do it, but that's kind of the issue. It's like, just look at this. Like, the top wave right now is just going in, even though they're going for the high ground attempt. It does look like it'll be successful. First fortification comes out, but there will not be a second one because the top tower's already gone. But they really don't want to give up their building. Smoke so. up. This is a pretty cool smoke, right? Because you said about top being pushed in, if they TP back, and one by one chain TP, then there will be a chance for Geek Fan maybe to, to catch some stragglers and Talon. They're aware of this. They know they're not going to show any hero top. And when they do, they've done it when they've already retreated from the area. So, yeah, nice stuff for there from Talon. Not just overreacting to the Terra Base split push. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty nice discipline play from both here. Geek Fan. You know, trying to find the opportunity to fight into that Aegis. You can only do it with a hero down, basically. More, if even more elusive now with this swift blink as well. So you have that annoying waveform in blink out combo, which is just a, a full creep wave dead instantly. Super annoying to play into. No gold advantage either way at this point. 16 kills to 6, 42 minutes into the game. Such a stalemate we've just been stuck in for 42, 42 minutes. minutes. <laughs> <It feels like>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what will be the game breaking item? What will be the game breaking play? I mean, we've been waiting for like a big RP or a big horn toss, but it's just been skewer backs and one man RPs pretty much the entire time. And no fault of WS, he just hasn't had multiple heroes to jump on here. Raging Potato, great target, and they will bring him down, but. Also, not the really one you want to be catching out with these cross map smokes. It's yeah, been Jenna's recovered. Big. I mean, there are three gems in play now because Radiant did buy a new one. 
Rubik yeah, sending his back to this. The... Hmm? Yeah, oh, no, wait. Ponyo said that. Thank you very much. Oh, did he just join it? The oh, there <laughs> he we did go. Okay. To the Korea. I mean, age is still up for a minute. Like, I, I like the ambition of talent hitting the bottom tier three. I like that. But then they just, of course, they disengage. They, they the thing that's terribly, anytime you go down one lane, the other two will just get pushed in. So this isn't just a simple strategy of go one lane, take Brax, right? You always have to respect that kind of multi uh, wrong approach that terribly has, where you can defend and siege at the same time. And now Morphling walks up to the high ground. Oh, Find big skewer back onto the leader, RP. and now the RP comes through, landing onto both the Centaur and the leader. Hauntos as well to follow up. They need a bit more damage though. Cox still alive on the high ground, and under the cover of BKB gets himself away, as does the leader. The follow up's just not there. Demonic Clan's doing so much work, but now they've backed themselves away. Both teams disengage. A buyback on Raging Potato as well. Of course, starting that one off to give them that cleanse to save them from the fight, but. God. Will anybody die this game? <laughs> I don't think so. I would love to know the lowest skill scoring SEA games in like the last year. This might potentially be up there. Over 40 <laughs> minutes though. Like there are going to be some outlier yeah. games which are like super low, but if there's any stats guys out there and they want to check that stat, I'm, I start feeling this is up there. Maybe top five. Look at you, Benji. Thought of Knoxville. Uh, it's just, it's, it's such an interesting game from both these teams. Oh, we definitely okay, not what I expected from the upper bracket, but yeah. No, I, I feel like if anything, this is. Quick. I think if if I was giving like brutal, honest take without trying to sugarcoat, I think I'm more impressed by Geek Fam than I am Talon in this game. I think Geek oh, Fam yeah, has same. presented a lot of opportunities for themselves through map play, through skipping waves. I think their smoke and general team fight selection has been very good. They've got six kills, but it feels at least four of them have been like high impact kills to keep the game, you know, progressing. I think Talon had a lot of tools to, you know, break down this Terror Blade pre scardy They had opportunities to punish the farming nature and they just didn't really connect it. And it is a relatively slim window. Like it's, Kind of like 15 to 25 minutes is when I expect them just to be, you know, crazy aggressive, but it never really came through. Like this first item BKB Razor, the Blink Rush and the Magnus, you amp it up with the damage of a Rubik and an ET. Like there are ways for them to take fights. Of course, there isn't like that. There's not like a simple approach to a fight for them. It's just like a lot of Blink Skewer back kill. Like the Morphling at that minute mark won't have the perfect items to do it, but still I feel Talon have missed quite a lot of beats with their heroes, which has created this very stalemate style game where geek fam even though they kind of control the wider game they're still the ones under threat because of course at any minute they can just get blow uh, blown up and terrorblades positioning is key just yeah uh, so far impressed by geek fam a lot they are down in net worth they are down in kills but the things that they've done to get here have been you know some some very top tier dota for sure yeah, definitely, definitely. I do feel like one of the reasons why I was struggling to see Talon like really convert their advantage into anything more meaningful and kind of like finish up this game, like this Razor's build of items has just been like really defensive. And I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because he is kind of the guy who just runs into the front lines, mm -hmm. uses BKB, wanna... you know, under the cover of Lincoln's and then just refreshes and does it all again. Can I give you a... I'm going to try and create a new phrase. I just thought about it, and I really like it. Okay. His build go, okay. looks kind of flat. Like, there doesn't Ooh, feel like there's, like, really nice power spikes in it, to, you know, to bring him up to points where you have to respect the Razor. Because, like, the BKB is a good power spike, right? But then the items after all kind of fit the same build. Like you mentioned, like, Tankiness, right? He goes for Sanjan Yasha, for Speed and Tankiness. He goes for Lincoln, for Tankiness, yeah. Refresher to do it again, right? Defiant Show, Armor, Tankiness. Like, all of his items are in, like, one dimension of the game. So his build's very, like, flat. It does the same thing every single time. Like, he's not gone for, like, a Satanic to give him a little bit more sustain, potentially, to hold onto that static link to, to stand his ground. He's not gone for, like, a, an AC to provide some additional armor to his heroes to amp up his morphling. Like, there's no, like, points where I'm like, ooh, like, I think this itemization is still very good in games in which you enable it if you yeah. use it correctly but the way that they're playing it doesn't bring this build to light like this is the type of build where 
they've crushed their game in the first half now they're two racks up right now then we're praising it but the way that they've played it's very easy for us to look at this build and find problems with it but i would lean I more on the the game plan than the the optimization yeah it's just a minor point which kind of builds up to a whole just another mm -hmm. brick yeah. in the wall of static gameplay which ton of kind of created but I mean, you know, if they, if they still come out with the win, then I guess it, it works out in the end, but I'm not sure that's how you should view the game. You're really asking Morphling to do everything, and it's, it's, it's not enough. Especially with his threat, such great beat fam have when it comes to damage, you know. Two really massive damage heroes versus this morph. Gary for Akashi. He's only died the once, but that's just through him being playing very, very carefully. I got what heroes dying yeah, feels like in Dodo, by the way. Hmm. What, what does uh, a team fight feel like, Nomad? Could you please describe what one feels like to me? Well, Akashi's trying to find out as he just runs into the front lines here. Stunned up, taken down, he's gone. No buyback. Uh, he does have a buyback available, sorry, but he is still out for the count. As Razor in the middle of everybody, my same thing happening to him. Stolen Stampede, will it be enough? Or oh, Shield Rune being popped as well? I don't know where that came from. Cheese in the backpack, ready to go. TP gonna be successful. Where the hell did he get a Shield Rune from? I don't know, but uh, that saves his life. <laughs> Thanks, <no>, Matt. <laughs> oh, he got it from the river. Okay, cool. Thank you. It, it kind of speaks for itself. Talon just kind of walking through their jungle and just bump into the entirety of Geek Fam, right? Like it's incredibly awkward. And now they find the Rubik. They have a sentry. Uh, oh, no, self Laguna. Kind of hurts. And Laguna again. No? Okay. I was ready for the double Laguna, but uh, <laughs> Rubik didn't go for it. Would have made a difference to his fate, regardless. Oh, Geek Fam knocking on the bottom wrecks. Why are they being taken right now just by an yeah. army of Terrorblades? Raging Potato and Natsumi ready to take some barracks just by themselves. Fox going to come in and get involved. Go back, Little Pony. This is no place for you. Don't forget the Terror also has Satanic as well. So even if there was a fight to be relatively close, this Terrorblade shouldn't be dying. Nearly 4,000 HP. BKB Mad to Hurricane Pack Satanic Scardy. Like, incredibly strong items on this and hero let's not forget disruption and demonic cleanse as well so yep that's true and a stampede like geek fam they are the eight kills in 50 minutes but Oof. Like, are we sure this is sea like are we are we being <laughs> pranked it's like one of those shows where at the end it'll be like surprise you were actually China covering the whole time trying game yeah it's like <laughs> woo. To be fair, that, that meme is like the China of Dota in like 2015, like that's old school China memes. Like nowadays, China fans or Chinese fans, sorry, are going to be like, ah, oh, that's not how we play Dota anymore. It's like they don't, to be fair, they're very aggressive, but it's one of those nostalgia memes. All the boomers will, will chuckle when they hear that. Indeed. I miss the days of, uh, you know, burning anti-mage, hitting a thousand creeps in. 50 minutes and then going high ground. Yeah, it does feel like the general patch direction as Geek Fam do take Roshan, most likely uncontested, getting an axe for themselves this time. It does feel like the patch direction over the years have been moving the game towards wanting to install more fights, wanting to create those moments where it's like, it just feels fun to play. Like the, the concept of just only farm installing games out was slowly getting patched out. Also Hold pro on, teams adopting this mentality. Portal. Okay, coming through the portal, time. it's Natsumi. Oh, Manta dodge on the harpoon. It's Natsumi to safety. <laughs> he is just running for the hills right now. My apologies for blabbering. I was trying to create a podcast in the downtime. That's all right. That's all right. Now, Raging Potato could potentially go for the Lotuses at bottom and uh, almost have enough. He's, he'll be two healing Lotuses off creating the, uh, the Giga Cheese. Which isn't as bad as it used to be. It actually regens during taking damage now, so it is, it, it's kind of sick. I want to see it pretty badly. Do it, Raging Potato. Though. Become the. The game's been slow enough that we'll easily be able to obtain it at some point. Hi. But it's whether they know that it's been changed as a thing, because it's, it's not actually a thing. Like, it's not listed in the patch notes or anything like that, but. Uh, 
feel like they should. The fact that Raging Potato is just farming lotuses suggests maybe they could. But... Very correct. So what got changed? What got removed? Uh, the cheese shield thing got uh, changed so that it gives bonus armor now. Uh, oh, not a bonus sorry. armor. It, uh, it, the shield regens. Hey, the way you said patch, my brain got... Uh, I was like, there's a patch? And then <laughs> the monkey brain I heard it removed and I was like... <laughs> so I, I went full reddit brain on that one <laughs> just i had nothing just all i was like patch gravel patch <laughs> immediately muscle memory to reddit slash new and there a pause go. mike mm -hmm. Badge, mike huh mm -hmm. no but geek right. found the position at the low ground just, they could just do it like they did before, right? Send up the illusions, don't really allow for any opportunity. Talon on the high ground, of course. Vision is key. They have the refresher on the Magnus. They have the horn toss, the harpoon, the BKB. Like, Magnus has every single item in the game possible to hit the big plays. He could grab a hero from the tier three and put them in the fountain if he wanted to. They gotta be careful. This Magnus could be the comeback mechanism. Door the blink! It's always a threat. <laughs> oh, very quick. Everybody's ready. Every everybody's on tender hooks. This will come in handy. I, I only care about one thing. Though. I'm just looking at this lotus pool in the bottom and top side. So, place, come on, Ridge Potato, you could do it. That's what I want to see. Damn it, he's TPing away. You fool. But uh, it is important to you know win the game as well. Refresher on the Magnus, by the way. I'm not sure if you mentioned that one, but uh... yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, good. I see. Nah, I, that's what my. That's what I'm looking forward for. I really want to yeah. see like the RP skewer refresh skewer back to like super deep behind like tier three area or tier four area. Sorry. Like that's my. That's my main game plan now for Talon. Like Terrorblade steps up by himself, gets a little bit optimistic, a little bit cheeky. And then gets reminded that Magnus is in the game. And it's why Geek Fam, even though they now finally got a healthy net worth lead, they have an Aegis, they have Cheese, aren't just rushing to try and end this game. I mean, my, my favorite uh, refresher RP play is when you go for the first RP, then you blink forwards and horn toss and skewer some more people in, and then go for the second RP with even more people in it. Like, that's the that's creme de la creme for me. You, you like the long skewers, eh? The back-to-back -back skewers into the fountain. I mean, I think against an Aegis target, is, it's usually better, but... Pile up is fun as well. Hold up. Hold up. Lotus check. The Lotus pool has been emptied. Raging Potato, he has a lot. But not all of them, as Jokam just gets blasted in the face by the Terrorblade. Oh, in we go. Magnus, he manages to find Raging Potato. Raging Potato thrown into this disruption for now. RP comes down, but he kind of needs to escape here on the Magnus. He's going to be able to do exactly that. Gets himself back. Second RP at the ready if he wants it. He's just got enough mana to throw down the RP, and that's about it. And he's not going to be able to do it now. He runs out of mana for two. Fighting up its drudge one. That should be able to hold his own against the Terra Blade. What? The Terra Blade's dead. It. He's not going to have BKB when he comes back either. Oh, this could be awful for Geek Fam right now. And they found Lena on the side. Headlines as well, so Natsumi now completely alone. BKB comes out, but TP not possible. No Sunder either. He's just gone. Alan, they completely outmaneuver them in this fight. Well, I don't know what's happening in this game anymore, Nomad. Like, Geek Fam, they've done so what? much Where did to get Lina go? Got blown up by Morphling. Caught mm -hmm. out by the Magnus with the Horn Toss and the Morphling on the sidelines. They caught it trying to get away into the fight from the side. That's why he, that's okay. I was watching the Magnus and he refreshed and then blinked away from the fight. And I was like, where's he going? I guess there's no RP coming down to the TB, but he went for the horn toss onto Lena instead. Very, very yeah. nicely done. The the key fam, the like, they just got a little bit too relaxed with their, their illusion seeds, right? And in doing so, Talon, they take a page out of Geek Fam's book with this big rapper. Oh my god, what the hell move. was that? <laughs> I don't know what's happening anymore. Cox is running around with the Stampede on the front lines. They're trying to buy him a little bit of time. RP, RP comes out onto the Bye two of the beautiful stuff. Catching the Lena once again, and he TPs into the skewer. 
Mac is Lina's just dead. gone. Natsumi fighting up all by himself, dealing the damage to WF, trying to chase him back away. Terra Wave there as well. Tron's going to be that target. Natsumi, Cox, Raging Potato, all chasing forwards, looking for the target right now. But the Morphing jumping into the back lines and Kashi turning into the TV as well. And now another skewer comes down, dragging Natsumi out. He's got the Sunder. He needs to find the target. He's going to get it off in time, but can he keep on fighting without the Metamorphosis? I don't think so. Akashi brings him down. Dead for 120 seconds. No TP. It is all over from here on <laughs> out, Talon. <laughs> they finally finished the game and WSE pulled it out the bag oh, in the end. No. All right, I, I'll be, I'm gonna be so honest. I feel pretty bad for Geek Fam, right? They did so much in this game to keep themselves in it. They skipped on so many fights, kept the map going, did all this work.